Greetings, one and all. Welcome back to Whatever Happened To, the series where we take a where are they now look at players who found success in the National Hockey League but are no longer permanent fixtures of the league either due to controversy, poor play or just rotten luck. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at a former alternate captain and Stanley Cup champion as we ask, whatever happened to Maxime Talbot? After being selected 234th overall in the 2002 NHL entry draft by the Pittsburgh Penguins, Maxine Talbot spent the remainder of his teenage years playing in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League with the Hull slash Gatineau Olympics, where he notched 202 points in 110 games over two seasons. During this time, Talbot would be awarded back-to-back Guy Lafleur trophies as the league's playoff MVP and earn back-to-back nods to the QMJHL's second All-Star team as the Olympics would win consecutive President's Cups. When the 2004-05 season arrived, the NHL was in a lockout, so Talbot signed his entry-level contract with the Pittsburgh Penguins and was immediately assigned to the team's AHL affiliate, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. Unfortunately, Talbot's offensive power in juniors seemed to disappear when he moved to the AHL, as he only notched 7 goals and 12 assists for 19 points in 75 regular season games, as well as an assist in 11 playoff games. However, Talbot showed great skills as a two-way player who was responsible on the defensive side of the puck, a reputation that he would carry for many years to come. The 2005-06 season saw Talbot have an impressive training camp and make the Penguins' opening night roster against the New Jersey Devils. Talbot scored perhaps one of the craziest first career goals ever as he scored from centre ice against the Philadelphia Flyers on October 14th, 2005. Talbot was primarily used as a penalty killer during his rookie season, but he managed to notch five goals and three assists for eight points in 48 games with the Penguins. After those 48 games, Talbot was reassigned to the AHL Penguins team, where he rediscovered his offensive abilities, scoring 12 goals and 20 assists for 32 points in 42 games, as well as three goals and six assists for nine points in 11 playoff games in the AHL. The 06-07 season saw Talbot start in the AHL with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, but after five games he was called back up to the Pittsburgh Penguins to continue his NHL career. Whilst he was still mostly used as a penalty killer, Talbot began to find his feet offensively in the best league in the world, as he notched 13 goals and 11 assists for 24 points in 75 games. Talbot also added a single assist in five playoff games, but the Pittsburgh Penguins were eliminated in the first round of the playoffs by the Ottawa Senators. The 07-08 NHL season had Talbot on the Penguins NHL roster full-time for the first time in his career, as he notched 12 goals and 14 assists for 26 points in 63 games. Talbot also scored three goals and six assists for nine points in 17 playoff games as the Pittsburgh Penguins made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, but they were eliminated in six games in the finals by the Detroit Red Wings. Ah, to come so close yet fall so far is always a tough feeling as a player, but the Pittsburgh Penguins weren't going to accept defeat that easily. The 08-09 NHL season was Talbot's final year of his entry-level contract. The Pittsburgh Penguins were happy with how Talbot had performed for the team, so they decided to re-sign him to a two-year contract extension on December 19th, 2018. Talbot rewarded the Penguins with continued consistency both offensively and defensively as he put up similar numbers to his previous seasons in the league, notching 12 goals and 10 assists for 22 points in 75 games. However, it was in the playoffs where Maxime Talbot proved his worth, as he scored 8 goals and 5 assists for 13 points in 24 playoff games, as the Pittsburgh Penguins defeated the defending champion Detroit Red Wings in 7 games in the Stanley Cup Finals to win the Stanley Cup and clinch the team's first cup victory since 1992. 
Just like that, Maxime Talbot had won the greatest prize in hockey and had done what only a small group of players have ever done in their playing careers. He had become a Stanley Cup champion. Ah, oh, it doesn't get that much better, does it? The 09-10 NHL season saw Talbot's production drop noticeably as he only notched two goals and five assists for seven points. However, this was perhaps in part due to Talbot only playing 45 games that season due to injuries. Talbot did return to the lineup for the playoffs where he scored two goals and four assists for six points in 13 games, but the defending Stanley Cup champions couldn't repeat their success the following year as they were eliminated in seven games in the second round by the Montreal Canadiens. The 10-11 NHL season had Talbot play an entire season for the first time in his then six-year NHL career. Talbot notched eight goals and 13 assists for 21 points in 82 games, keeping relatively consistent with his previous full season totals. Talbot also scored a goal and three assists for four points in seven playoff games, but the Penguins were eliminated in the first round of the playoffs by the Tampa Bay Lightning. After Maxine Talbot's contract extension had expired and he was unable to come to terms with the Penguins on a new contract, on July the 1st, 2011, the Stanley Cup champion signed a five-year, $8.75 million contract with the Philadelphia Flyers, the Pittsburgh Penguins' interstate rivals. This was, of course, seen as a hugely controversial move on Talbot's part, as these two teams have such a burning hatred for each other. These two teams despise each other. Now, I can imagine a lot of Penguins fans furious with Maxime Talbot, thinking he was a traitor after going to sign with their Flyer rivals. And I can also imagine a lot of Philadelphia Flyers fans laughing their asses off for stealing a solid depth player from the team they hate the most in the league. Sports are a pretty weird industry, but they're so fascinating, aren't they? The 11-12 season saw Talbot suit up for the Flyers for the first time, and in doing so, he had the best offensive season of his career, notching 19 goals and 15 assists for 34 points in 81 games. Talbot would also notch 4 goals and 2 assists for 6 points in 11 playoff games, but the Flyers were eliminated in 5 games in the second round of the playoffs by the New Jersey Devils. Fun fact, all 4 playoff goals that Talbot scored those playoffs were against his old Pittsburgh Penguins team in round 1, two of which were short-handed goals. If that isn't a statement to Pittsburgh that they were foolish to let Maxime Talbot go, I don't know what is, folks. The 12-13 NHL season began in a lockout, so Talbot took his talents overseas to Tampere Isles of Finland, where he notched three goals and three assists for six points in 12 games. However, like most NHL players during the shortened season, Talbot's time abroad was short-lived as he returned to Philadelphia when a new collective bargaining agreement was signed and the season resumed. Talbot scored 5 goals and 5 assists for 10 points in 35 games during the shortened season, but the Philadelphia Flyers ultimately missed out on the playoffs, and Maxime Talbot missed out on postseason action for the first time in 7 years. The 13-14 NHL season saw Talbot put up a goal and an assist for 2 points in 11 games with the Flyers early on in the season. However, on October 31st on Halloween 2013, Maxime Talbot was traded to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for forward Steve Downey. Talbot kept his point production consistent with the rest of his career after his move to Denver as he notched 7 goals and 18 assists for 25 points in 70 games with the Avalanche. Talbot would help Colorado make the playoffs but he didn't notch a single point in seven games as the Avalanche were eliminated in seven games in the first round by the Minnesota Wild. Whilst he got back to the playoffs, he didn't really notch any points and help the team get any further. The 14-15 NHL season had Talbot back with the Colorado Avalanche for his second season as the team looked to make a deeper playoff run. Whilst Talbot would score five goals and ten assists for 15 points in 63 games, he was traded again at the 2015 NHL trade deadline to the Boston Bruins. After being sent to his third team in two seasons, Talbot notched three assists in 18 games with the Bruins, who would ultimately miss the playoffs, meaning Talbot would miss out on postseason hockey for the second time in three seasons. 
The 15-16 NHL season saw Talbot with the Boston Bruins again, and in the final year of the five-year contract, he signed back with the Philadelphia Flyers in 2011. Talbot was looking to prove he still had gas left in the tank at the NHL level, and that he was still a serviceable player in the league. However, the Boston Bruins didn't quite get that memo, as Talbot notched two goals and five assists for seven points in 38 games, before demoting Talbot to their AHL team, the Providence Bruins. Talbot played well in Providence, as he scored 10 goals and 11 assists for 21 points in 26 games, as well as an assist in three playoff games, but Providence were eliminated in the first round of the AHL playoffs. As his five-year contract expired, Max Talbot knew that his value in the NHL was rather diminished compared to his last free agency. So on May the 27th, 2016, Maxine Talbot signed with Lokomotiv Yaroslav of the Continental Hockey League. After 11 seasons in the NHL, Max Talbot was heading to Europe to see if he could be a top player in the second best league in the world. The 16-17 NHL season saw Talbot suit up in the locomotive jersey for the first time, as the Stanley Cup champion notched 15 goals and 21 assists for 36 points in 60 games with the team. Talbot also scored 5 goals and 2 assists for 7 points in 15 playoff games, but Lokomotiv were swept in the third round of the Gagarin Cup playoffs by SKA St. Petersburg. After a solid offensive year with Lokomotiv, the two parties came to an agreement on a new multi-year contract to keep Maxime Talbot with Lokomotiv for the next couple of years. After moving from North America and leaving the NHL only a year ago, it looked like Maxime Talbot had found a home across the world in Russia. The 17-18 KHL season saw Talbot notch 8 goals and 11 assists for 19 points with Lokomotiv. However, the alternate captain of the team only played 43 games last season due to injuries. Talbot also did score an assist in nine playoff games, but Lokomotiv were eliminated in five games in the second round of the playoffs, once again by SKA St. Petersburg. To this day, Maxime Talbot is still part of the Lokomotiv organisation as an alternate captain of the team. My research shows that he is contracted to the team until the end of next season, the 2018-19 season, but after that, it appears he will become a free agent once again. Will Maxime Talbot return to the NHL as a 35-year-old and find himself a one-year contract with a team? Or will he sign another contract in Russia and continue to play hockey in the KHL? I guess time will only tell. But regardless of whether he plays in the NHL, the KHL, or whether he plays professional hockey at all after next season, Maxime Talbot has given it a pretty good run up until this point. The 234th pick of his draft class has played 704 NHL games, scored 91 goals, and notched 113 assists for 204 points so far in his NHL career in the best league in the world. Not many draft picks in the 200s can boast those sort of numbers, that's for sure. Sure, he's not a prolific goal scorer and he's not a point-per-game type of player, but he's not supposed to be. When you sign a guy like Maxime Talbot to your roster, you know exactly what you're getting. A solid two-way player who is responsible on the defensive side of the puck, but can chip in some clutch goals when your team need them most. He did score the cup-winning goal in 2009 after all, so he does know what he's doing. But whatever he decides to do after next season, Talbot has been a great example of how you can achieve anything you want by putting in hard work and graft. And he has reminded fans how teams need just as many role players who are consistently good at their jobs as a team needs superstars to succeed as a hockey club and win championships. One thing's for sure though, you don't play 11 seasons in the NHL and play over 700 games by being a bad hockey player. And Maxime Talbot is anything but that. And there you go. That's what happened to Maxime Talbot. What do you think about Talbot's career up until this point? Has it been good? Bad? Or would you like to see him return to the NHL after his KHL contract expires next season? Also, if you have a suggestion for the next player to look at in this Whatever Happened To series, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.